Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. In this video, I wanted to show how to get the differential area of a sphere. And in physics, we use this for a lot of things. Um, but for this example, I wanna show how the electric field um, using Gauss's law requires you to get the differential area of a sphere. And so let's see how to um, get it from these these spheres. So this is a 3D sphere, okay? Just like uh, the a previous video, the video I made deriving the position coordinates. So for this one, I'll try to make this one look a little 3D. Okay, so just just to understand, this is 3D and this is 3D, but I'm not gonna draw this one in 3D because I wanna show the inside of it. Okay, so in this one right here, we have the R vector again, coming out to the surface. Okay, so one of these little squares here could represent us actually on the surface. All right, and this is our differential area right here. These four sides. Okay, so that represents you right on the surface, like a little slab of that surface. And now we know that the angle theta comes from the Z down. And we also know that phi sweeps on the X, Y plane. So it goes from X to Y, okay? So now let's draw the same thing here. Okay, but before that, I wanna show and review arc length. So, arc length, right? What we learned in trig is gonna be some length r coming out like this and an angle theta. And so this area here, or this arc length here, okay, we're gonna, we'll denote it by S. Okay, that arc length is equal to the radial distance from the center times theta, the angle, okay? So this is gonna be very important in understanding how we're gonna get the differential area. Okay, so just keep that in mind, all right? This arc length here is the radius times the angle, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this sphere here. All right, so we draw our radial vector, okay? And we're gonna label this R, and we have our differential slab, right? So let's make this a little wider and let's make this a little thicker here so we can see it clearly. Okay, that's our differential area. Right on the surface. Okay, now what I want to do is project it down from here and project it down from here, okay? And so this side here is the same thing as this side here, all right? And we're going to draw the, the projection of the radial vector down on the XY plane, okay? Let me draw that in another color. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's find the components up here for theta. So theta comes down from the Z and this side here represents R sine theta, okay? And we're gonna project that down onto here, R sine theta. So that's this length right here. That's also this length right here. So they're both the same thing, okay? 
And here we have R cosine of theta. Okay? So now, if this is theta and we stop here, okay? If we move a little bit more to this piece here of our differential area, so we move a certain theta here and we stop. And now we're at this radial distance all the way up here. And then we move a little bit more, so d theta, a differential area downward here, and now we end up here, okay? So that means that this side, this arc length here, let's draw an arrow. This arc length here is going to be R, which is the radial distance or the radius, times the angle, right? And the angle we're working with is this one in here, which is d theta. Okay, so r times the angle. So we got r times the angle, that's the arc length. So we got one side of our differential area. Okay, now let's work on the bottom. So we know that phi sweeps from x to y or the, in the xy plane. So we're gonna go from x to y. And so let's say we stop right there at this line here. And then we move again some distance d phi, a differential length of d phi in that direction. Okay, so first we have a phi, right? Some, some length of phi, and then another differential length of phi. So we moved a little bit more. Okay, so now this angle in here is defined as what we moved second, and this is what we moved first. And so now this arc length right here is gonna be the radius times the angle, right? So we got the radius times the angle. The radius here is r sine theta. And so that's r sine theta times the angle, which is d phi. Okay, so arc length. So if we project this up now, it's the same thing as this angle right here. Okay, so this was projected downward, and now we're projecting it back upward. And so this in here, okay, is r sine theta d phi. I'm just writing it again. So this side we found, and this side we found. Perfect. So now, what do we have? We know that differential area is the same thing as length times width. Okay? Um, you could think about you could think about, for example, uh, a box, right? And if you want the area of this box, so let's say it's uh, a times a, you know, you're gonna do length times width, okay, so a squared, and, um, and you'll get your differential area. The same with this small slab of the sphere that's represented like a small little box, okay? We want length times width, okay? So let's erase this example and show that the length Okay, is gonna be r d theta, which is this one right here. Okay, and then the width, which is gonna be this, is gonna be r sine theta d phi. Okay, so this is our differential area. All right, now let's show how we can use this differential area when we're talking about um, electric field and using Gauss's law. Okay, so 
Gauss's law for electric field is the closed integral of the electric field vector dotted with the differential area vector equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught, which is the permittivity, free space. Okay, so we need differential area, right? And so if we are dealing with an area, we're dealing with two integrals. And so those integrals are gonna be, first of all, let's pull out the E, okay? And we have two integrals because we have a differential area. So a volume is three integrals, area is two integrals. And if we just had a line charge, that would be one integral. Okay, so we have two integrals and this right here is our differential area. So we're gonna substitute this into our formula and we're gonna have r d theta, r sine theta, d phi, all right? And that all equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. All right, so let's, um, let's rearrange this a little bit. Uh, before we do that, let's look at the limits of integration. Okay, so let this first one here represent d theta. Okay, so we know that theta goes from zero to pi. All right, so zero starting up here, and if we sweep all the way down to the negative z-axis, that's pi. And so that's the limits of theta. And for phi, it's gonna go from zero to two pi. So the phi starts here, and it goes all the way around the xy plane until it comes back to the x-axis where it started. So that's all the way around, so that's two pi. Okay, so these are the limits of integration that we're working with. Zero to pi, that's for theta, and zero to two pi, that's gonna be for the phi. All right, so let's, um, let's, re let's rewrite this a little better. And we still have the E on the outside, the integral from zero to two pi, zero, the integral from zero to pi, and we have r squared sine theta d theta d phi equals q enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay, so we'll take this integral and we'll solve it over here. And so let's separate this these two integrals into what we're gonna be integrating over. And so we have E, which stays on the outside. Let's put a box on the inside here, and let's separate sine of theta with the theta. So we got the integral from zero to pi, sine of theta, d theta. And then we have the r squared, and we don't have anything for the phi, so let's write the integral from zero to two pi d phi, and we're gonna keep the r squared, but we're gonna pull it out. Since there's no dr, this is just area, we can actually pull out the r squared, and we'll, pull it, we'll put it there, we'll put a big bracket, We'll put some parentheses around that, okay? And then all of this still equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. All right, so this integral here, the integral of sine is cosine. Um, so it's actually negative cosine, okay? And if we evaluate cosine from pi to zero, we're just gonna get, okay, so let me write it here. We got E R squared K 
Okay, we got two. That's from this integral here. And from this integral here, we're just gonna have two pi. Because since we have one, the integration of one, um, that's gonna be phi, and then if we evaluate the limits, it's just gonna be two pi, okay? So we have that, Q enclosed over epsilon naught. If we combine these, then we see four pi r squared. Okay, Q enclosed over epsilon naught. All right, and so that's what we would need in order to start a problem using uh, Gauss's law, differential area, and I just wanted to show the integration and the process of how to get it. Usually you'll memorize this, so you won't need it, but it's good to know where it comes from. And also, if you're wondering how this integral here, uh, this integral in here is equal to two, uh, let me just do it real quick. So the integral from zero to pi of sine theta d theta, okay? This integral is gonna be negative cosine evaluated from zero to pi. So if we have negative, I'm gonna box that up, cosine of pi, which is final, minus cosine of zero, Right, cosine of pi is negative one. So this is gonna be negative one minus cosine of zero is one. So this is negative two, and we have a negative out here, and so it equals two, okay? All right, and there you have it.